Well, I'll tell you, your interest rates for borrowing go up. You know how much of its spending the U.S. spends on interest rates alone? 6% of the entire federal budget pays for uh, debt uh, interest repayment. Uh, so, for example, Republicans in Congress wanted to cut $61 billion from the debt in 2011. Uh, you know how much we spent on interest alone that year? $207 billion. And I know I sound like Paul Ryan giving you a bunch of numbers, but just listen, okay? It's pretty staggering. You know how much the, uh, the deficit for 2011 was? $1.64 trillion. We're adding over a trillion dollars to our national debt every year. But no, Bush spent too much money. It's fine. Bush never even reached anything like those numbers. In fact, he actually, surprisingly, had a bit of a surplus for several years of his presidency during his tax, uh, his, uh, not true? No? Uh, no, actually, 2000, 2003, no, 2003. It, read the... 2003, there was a surplus of money under the Bush administration. Before we went to Iraq. Yes, before we went to Iraq, true. <laughs> I'm not saying, yes, I agree. I'm not, Iraq was an unfunded liability, <laughs> to put it lightly. Right, the point I'm trying to make generally is that the debt is unsustainable. And Obama has done literally nothing to cut the debt, even though he promised when he came into office that he would half it by the end of his first term. No, he hasn't had it, halved it. He's added almost $5 trillion to the national debt. Right, let's move on to another issue because I'm sure you're all bored of the debt. Unfortunately, it still has to do with, with spending. Uh, let's talk about Social Security, which the president in a recent debate, his second debate, I believe, called fundamentally sound. Uh, I would, uh, I would controversially like to start this segment with the definition of a Ponzi scheme. A fraudulent investment plan which investors of later, uh, sorry, a fraudulent investment plans in which the investors of later, investments of later investors are used to pay earlier investors, giving the appearance that investments of the initial participants dramatically increase in value in a short amount of time. Uh, it's, it's been called a Ponzi scheme by people like Friedman, people you'd normally expect, but also Paul Krugman in the New York Times, right? Uh, uh, Ponzi scheme, it called Social Security a Ponzi scheme game where each generation takes more out than it puts in. Uh, the scheme already is in the red by billions of dollars, and it's, about to, it's scheduled to run out of money by 2035. I will have no retirement money. Mike will have no retirement money. Walt will. You guys will. That's cool, but we won't. Thanks a lot, guys. But no, no, it's okay. 2035 and it's all gone. But it's a fundal fundamentally sound system. Now, I'm not saying the Republicans are doing a fantastic job, but the proposition here is, should we vote for Obama? Is he going to solve the Social Security crisis? Are any Democrats in Congress, or Republicans for that matter, going to solve, uh, solve the Social Security crisis? No, just like they're not going to tackle the debt, even though we were promised in 2008 that it would be halved by the end of this term. But no, $4 trillion extra. All right. Uh, I guess I'll talk about Medicare as well. Also scheduled to run dry even sooner, 2024. I'm not going to have any uh, health care as an elderly person either. It's pretty unfortunate because most people require health care in their older years. Um, okay, and now I'm going to talk about how the U.S. is doing dramatically so much better than its European counterparts uh, who have followed the path of austerity. Okay, as I said, credit rating. Pretty important for borrowing. Borrowing costs go up. The U.S. has been downgraded once. Okay, so we solved the crisis, unemployment is going down, everything's back to normal. No, the president has a, hasn't passed a budget since he's been in office at all. So what do we do when we get downgraded again? Borrowing costs go up, and again, and again. Nothing is tackled uh, for the deficit. Yes? Who exactly pa passes budgets in the United States? Because I don't think the president is the one who <laughs> Congress, uh, with a Democratic leader. Who leads the Democratic Party? Who leads the Democratic Party? The president. Yes, he does. And he should get his Democrats in Congress in line, I would say. Especially <laughs> since, no? So basically, we have, yes? Are you aware that there's one thing that this whole period is about? It's about and tax and cuts? that is that budget, that the co borrowing costs went up. It was after Friedman in August of 2011, the credit rating went down to one. The, budget, the interest costs actually went down. That scared away the crowd because nobody believed the U.S. was not going to pay its debt. What they did say, what Moody said in his analysis, is the reason they were doing it is because the Republicans in the House had proved in, 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 uh, unwilling to compromise on any reasonable expenses of government. Well, how come... <laughs>
the president, the president himself commissioned something called Simpsons Bowls. It was a bipartisan commission to get the deficit down. However, it included tax cuts, closing tax loopholes, uh, sorry, tax increases and closing tax loopholes. He refused to endorse it after it was. He does not work. He, yes, he did. But I'm not trying to convince you to vote for Romney or be a Republican. I'm trying to tell you right now why you should not reelect Obama. Because we have $16 trillion worth of debt, and he won't endorse his own bipartisan plan to lower the debt. Um, so yes, returning back to, how much time do I have? Two minutes. Returning back to austerity versus uh, the US economy. As I said, we're in great shape. We have uh, uh, lots of money, apparently, uh, lying around. Uh, so when are, OK. So maybe borrowing costs didn't go down. What do you think is going to happen when we're downgraded again? When our debt isn't reduced. And it's going to keep going up. It, uh, all projections have it going up by trillions every year until, unless something is done about it. Uh, so the UK has followed a, a sort of a path of austerity. They're back to 2007 levels of spending, but that's austerity for Europe. And uh, <laughs> no, it is. <laughs> and uh, they've returned to growth recently. Um, However, the countries that have been downgraded to almost junk status, like Spain, Greece, 25% structural unemployment, pretty unfortunate place to live right now uh, in Southern Europe because of the intense borrowing that they can no longer afford. Um, so I guess in conclusion, I was going to touch on some other issues, but I don't really have much time. Uh, I'm not trying to convince you to vote for Romney. I know probably many of you would probably be physically sick if you even considered voting for Romney. I am, however, trying to convince you that we should not give another chance to a man who broke his promise to raise probably the most significant threat the United States has ever faced. $16 trillion worth of debt. And when we get downgraded again, I guarantee you borrowing costs will go up. And when we get downgraded again and again and again, they will go up astronomically. And at that point, people, well, we're going to have to cut something. What are we going to have to cut? Military? Probably. Social spending? Definitely. Uh, we spend more on, uh, contrary to popular belief, we spend more on Social Security than we do on our military. Uh, so in conclusion, do not trust a man who has lied to you and will do nothing about tackling the debt. Thank you. I'm Paul Ryan. Vote Romney. <laughs> Well, thank you very much. Um, so last year, when I, or four years ago, I should say, when I spoke to this House about whether or not to elect Barack Obama or Senator John McCain, there was no record to, to discuss Barack Obama. So I had to be primarily negative about John McCain and talking about what I would like to talk about, which is foreign policy. But today, luckily, we have a president who's been in office for four years and has done a wonderful job in, foreign policy, in the foreign policy realm. And in fact, I won't be too negative about Mitt Romney, um, to mention things like how you offend your closest ally by coming over and making stupid comments about the Olympics. I won't mention that one. <laughs> I, I, w I also I wouldn't want to mention uh, the fact that Mitt Romney would go to Israel f on a fundraising trip as opposed to going to Israel to reinforce Amer one of America's strongest alliances. So I won't, I won't mention that as well. I don't want to focus too much on that. Nor will I mention the fact that, that the Republican candidate believes we're still in the midst of the Cold War and that Russia is our primary <laughs> geopolitical threat. So just, just I want to make, I want to be positive. I'm going to be positive in this, in, in my speech. So I'm going to be positive about what I think. So let me say a couple things about Barack Obama, our president. Um, and I think the president has done a wonderful job. And I'm going to highlight a couple things. So first of all, he is a, truly a leader. He's a leader in the, in the mold of of John F. Kennedy in terms of how he leads and makes decisions within foreign policy making circles in his own administration. He brings in a whole host of conflicting positions. He listens to them all. He makes clear and careful decisions. And then when he makes a decision, he means it and he follows through on it. And I think just like John F. Kennedy did in combating the Cuban Missile Crisis, putting together an XCOM committee, making sure that he heard all opinions, that's precisely what Barack Obama did when he undertook the targeted killing of Osama bin Laden. So I believe that, he, that, that Obama's leadership style is perfect for foreign policy. That must, that's my first point. Secondly, I think he, he's actually, and I know some of you study international relations, um, and you know something, <laughs> you know something about realism. 
Um, in fact, people sometimes associate Democrats with idealists, eye in the sky, pacifist kind of, but it's pretty clear that Barack Obama, he himself has stated that he's a student of, not, not he wasn't literally, but has studied Reinhold Niebuhr, one of the famous um, realist thinkers. He, in his Nobel Peace Prize pe speech, which was perhaps a little early to give him a Nobel Peace Prize, I can acknowledge that, but um, in his speech, he spoke carefully and in a measured way about both peace, but also the need for using force. And I think this is the kind of president we need, not someone who still believes we're in the midst of a thermonuclear conflict with the Soviet Union, because there isn't a Soviet Union anymore, but in fact understands that careful measured force needs to be used in situations that are in fact the most direct threat to the United States. Not necessarily the 16 whatever billion trillion dollars, but in fact real live threats that we faced in situations like 9-11. So I think the president has really acted carefully in these kinds of situations. So that leads to my first substantive point, which is counterterrorism policy. Clearly, the Bush administration forgot <laughs> who they were fighting, okay? And it seems when they first went to Afghanistan, there was an effort to get Al-Qaeda, but then they got a little confused about, let's go get Saddam Hussein. He's the one that somehow was responsible for 9-11. Well, not really, not in fact. So in fact, this president came to office, carefully identified, went after the leadership of Al-Qaeda, and has in fact decimated the leadership of Al-Qaeda, not to say nothing of its leader, Osama bin Laden, but also in targeted airstrikes, he has been able to take out the leadership without harming civilians in the way that large-scale wars tend to do. So there is a much more careful, measured use of military force that this president has been able to use. And I think that there's much to say for that. Um, I think if we could turn to the Middle East, not just counterterrorism, but in fact the wider Middle East, these wonderful transitions that are happening in the Arab world. We have this flourishing of democracy. We have these efforts to kind of suddenly, er yes? I'm a little embarrassed this is my team. <laughs> yes, remember you're getting a mark from me. I know. Well, just to correct you, we're not striking at civilian targets. We're striking at leadership of Al-Qaeda. Uh, of course, anytime you use military force, people get killed. But the president has been extremely careful to use force in a measured and careful way and to target the leadership itself. So I appreciate the point. You go down one mark there, Parker. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. Uh, so in the Middle East, the, the, the administration has put together a funding package right now that is targeting states where we, the United States never really had much of a presence, for instance, Tunisia, has just recently put before Congress an effort to increase funding to Tunisia by $65 million to really support their efforts to democratize. They've been engaged in a very complex set of relations with Egypt, in which uh, the Muslim Brotherhood has now come into power in both the presidency and the parliament. But in fact, unlike some in the Republican Party who, want, who see this as somehow a threat to the universe, in fact, the Obama administration has recognized this is the democratically elected president. This is the democratically elected parliament. We deal with these people. We work with them. That's how diplomacy works. That's how you engage in leadership in the world. In Europe, the president has nicely, I think, <laughs> said to Europe, as, as, as the financial crisis is breaking out, has pointed out to them, you need to take care of your own house. It was 50 years ago the United States could simply flood Europe with money and take care of their problems. We live in a different world. The president knows that. He knows that Europe and its leaders have to figure out their own agenda. And he's been very careful and measured once again in how he's 